friends, Lee Brown here. Welcome back to My Kitchen, My Rules. I know you love my new apron, right? This came from the NC Realtors pack, and it says goat. I don't know if I am a goat, but I do think they're mighty cute in the field, and I've heard that their meat sells pretty good, and that some people don't make it go to the abattoir, so one day I'm probably going to have to have some goats in my yard. But in the meantime, how about we do something with some chickens? Y'all been asking me for a chicken pot pie that will make your family love you again on those days when you're just not sure. This, friends, will seal the deal. So here's what you need to have ready. You need your white lily flower. Look, we're gonna use all purpose for this. If you use self rising, the pot pie's gonna get wild, I tell you, wild. We don't need wild pie. We just want some wild goats, frankly. And what we're gonna do is start off with a very large mixing bowl here, and we need three cups of all-purpose flour. One of the perks of making chicken pot pie is you do not have to sift anything. I better stop talking because I tend to lose track while I'm talking. That's four, which makes two cups. I know, right? My math skills are amazing. And then if you're wondering why my container is right beside me, it's because it was just about slap empty. And so I'm gonna fill it back up here between tasks while I fix this up. So that is our three cups of flour. And now, the secret to an amazing pie crust, whether it's pot pie or any pie, is Crisco, y'all. Crisco is amazing. Don't be turning your nose up at it just because it's you know shortening, AKA lard. And I use the butter flavored because I do. And you can use regular if you choose to. I just, the butter flavor adds that little extra oomph to it. Now, you can use the lard out from under your sink if you keep a grease pan under your sink like I do from baking grease. You can totally use that, but when it comes to making pastry, this is one of the times you'll find Lee Brown measuring. I know that's gonna throw some of y'all off because you know that's not my strong suit. We need a cup and a half of Crisco, which is, is that right, a cup and a half? And this is one cup. We need a whole stick of the butter flavor Crisco, which means I need this one too. We're gonna have to use a half of this one too. And some of y'all are already clutching your pearls. Look, I'm wearing my pearls too. See, but I'm not clutching them because friends, food was made to be enjoyed. It's just not meant to be overindulged. Oh, and I'm gonna tell y'all a secret while I cut this in. By the way, this is the secret to getting your Crisco to go evenly into your flour. Use your knife to just chunk it up, all right? Now, if your Crisco is frozen, this will actually go far easier. Some folks cut it in cubes like they do with their Velveeta. This is my style. Because you know the rules, right? My kitchen, my rules, or my kitchen, not many rules. So anyway, what I was fixing to tell y'all is that when you actually get into the habit of cooking at home, which some of y'all did during the COVID-19 era, you find that controlling the ingredients, you actually are not nearly as hungry all the time. And you think, well, I'm cooking with real sugar, I'm cooking with real butter, I'm cooking with Crisco. You will find that you're actually gonna be able to control your weight because y'all, a lot of that stuff that you eat, it's got these crazy preservatives in it. And if you can't pronounce it, it's probably not your friend. And that's what the woman says while she's messing with Crisco. I know, right? I can hear y'all through the camera and I love you very much for being concerned about my inconsistencies. But you know what? I'm middle-aged and I really don't care anymore. So that's why I'm just sharing with y'all. So if you want to look along and enjoy, I welcome you along for the ride, friends. But uh, don't be too judgy, okay? And don't be all cancel culture -y. In fact, I'm just gonna tell you if you don't like something, just, you know, turn the channel. I mean, you know, I don't know why that got to be so hard. I remember what was hard about turning the channel when I was a kid. We had those three channels. Any of y'all remember when we had to go up and put the tin full on the rabbit ears? And sometimes you had to go outside and hold the antenna while your granddaddy hollered at you from inside the house and told you to point it this way and that way till he got the signal he wanted? Yes, those are, those are actually very fond memories. And I'm so sad that my children won't get to experience that because they live in a cable world, but I digress, which I'm pretty sure that's why y'all watch my channel anyway. So that's a cup and we need another half a cup. So let's open up the stick. And by the way, I do buy Crisco in all of its amazing forms, whether it's the stick form or the one that's in the tub. I don't know why I prefer to cook with the ones that are in the sticks. I guess that's something about the shape. I, I don't know. Maybe some of y'all have a magic answer for me on that. I do not know, I just know that's how I am. Here we are, all right. And that's a 
half there. And then we're just gonna chunk that up too. I hope that y'all are enjoying this over here in the B-roll part that y'all were so excited that I added. And I'm very grateful to my video production guru, Melvin, for making me look good on camera because he's very kind and very talented actually. So y'all give Melvin some love over in the comments. And I think you had ought to give Michelle and Lisa some love too for managing your request and comments and helping me know who wants to see what. And I do the very best I can y'all, but I am a realtor and a mom and a volunteer. I go to church. Oh, I love bike vacation, Bible school. I got a lot going on in my world, but I love having y'all here on my channel to enjoy cooking with me. So hello. I am glad you are here, and I hope that uh, whatever you're doing today is bringing you some joy because in life, friends, you've got choices to make, and sometimes one of the hardest things is choosing joy in a world that says don't, so that's just the Lee Brown philosophy for the day. All right, now we've got our cup and a half in there. Now, in your cabinet and in your drawer is probably one of these things. Y'all know what that is? That's a pastry cutter. If you've ever wondered why it was in your cupboard, you got it as a wedding present. I guarantee it. And you don't know how it got in there either. And then this is one of those satisfying feelings, y'all. Just work it around in here until your little big chunks of Crisco have turned into small chunks. And you've created a consistency that looks a little bit like cornmeal or little pebbles or some such. It's a pretty satisfying feeling. And you don't need to overwork it, but you wanna make sure you don't have any big pockets of flour or any untouched pockets of Crisco. And so that's what your pastry cutter will do for you. If you do not have a pastry cutter, a fork will do fairly well. And you can actually use your whisk for this as well. But this is one of those specialty tools that if you like making dumplings, crust, chicken pot pies, any of these kinds of things, you're gonna find yourself actually using it. <gasps> oh, I can feel myself relaxing right now. So that is what our consistency looks like. Make sure that it comes out of my controller here so I don't waste any of that beauty right there. Okay, now we got that mixed in really well. Next thing we need, while I was working on that, oh, you can look at my dirty cover, oh, it's a wreck. You need one egg, so go ahead and find you one egg. You're also gonna need some cold water. Now, for the purposes of making a good crust, it does actually have to be cold. So don't use your spigot water unless you let it run for a minute. So now we're gonna go ahead and whisk that one egg that we have. You could use a fork for this, or you can use a whisk. I might have saved myself the trouble of getting out a fork in my small bowl, but you know it still works. Beat that up. Then, we're just gonna pour this into our flour and shorten it. All right, next step. We need five tablespoons of that cold water. This is important, I'm gonna say it one more again. You need cold water, because it will start cooking the egg, friends. That's the most important thing you can remember here. So this came actually out of the refrigerator, right? So legit, like using flour here, or uh, filtered water. So sprinkle it around too, so it mixes in one. Two, Lee Brown should stop talking sometimes. Three, four, and five. And the next thing we need is one tablespoon of white vinegar. Today we have Heinz white vinegar. If you're wondering, Lee Brown, why is that container so big? Because I use vinegar to mop, and so I just buy a bunch of it at a time. Just because some of it comes in a fancier bottle does not mean it's any different, y'all. So, you know, just know you can use some things for multiple purposes. All right, so five tablespoons of ice water and one tablespoon of white vinegar. And now we need a little bit of salt. We don't need kosher for this. We need table salt for that consistency. And you need a teaspoon. Let me dry my hand. That's my technical thing right there. And those of y'all that know me, you know I can measure out the salt. That is a teaspoon. And we're just gonna sprinkle it so that it's evenly dispersed. All right. I'm gonna leave that out because I'm gonna need that later. And now, I'm actually not gonna use my pastry cutter to mix that because it's not a perfect mixer. All right, I'm gonna get a fork to mix this in. Make sure that you mix gently, friends, because you've got egg, you've got cold water, 
And when you over mix, that's when your toe gets really tough. If you've ever had a pie or a pastry that just felt like it was not flaky, it was really, really tough, it's because they over mixed it. So, you know, still give them some love. But we're just gently gonna mix it just until all the ingredients are in. And then, what we're gonna have here, when we decide to put it all together, and I'm gonna get myself prepared here before I show you all the next step. Dun, dun, dun. Now you're thinking, what happens next, Lee Brown? What happens next is you need three Ziploc bags. So get yourself three Ziploc bags. Alternately, you can get three pieces of Saran Wrap. But there is a reason we're gonna use Ziploc bags. We're gonna separate this beautifully made dough into thirds. And once we separate it into thirds, it's gonna go in the freezer for about 15 minutes to get it nice and cold. Why do we do that? Well, that's so that it can set up and then when we work the dough, it won't continually get hard and hard to work. So it makes it so much easier to work with and you're gonna appreciate that. I should have taken my rings off because I'm fixing to have to wash my rings. So now we got that all mixed in nicely. Give it a good mush so that it is doughy. And we're just going to divide it into thirds once it comes together. Mine's mine not coming together. By the way, if your dough does not come together, that's when you add an extra teaspoon of cold water. Cold water is your friend to make things come together. I'm gonna add just one more teaspoon and then I'm gonna work it in. And that's the other beauty of baking. Sometimes it looks perfect in the recipe and sometimes you have to make some adjustments as you go. Oh, it's like life. Make adjustments as you go, friends. Okay, now we're close. Get some of this loose down here at the bottom. All right, let's see if we can break that into thirds and it'll hold. All right, so when it starts to hold like this, remember, it's not perfect because it's gonna pick up dough on the countertop when you come back to roll it later. So there's a third and a third and a third. And I used the last one to pick up that little bit of spare out the bottom of the bowl because we do not like to waste. Waste not, won't not. And that is a phrase that needs to come back into fashion. Can y'all give me an amen on that? since our government tends to be very interested in being wasteful. Okay, so once we get our three thirds, we're gonna seal them up and put them in the freezer for just 15 minutes. And while that's in the freezer, I'm gonna show y'all how to start the filling. So be right back after this commercial break with no sponsor, but one day I might have a sponsor and I'll need this break. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, now that your dough is safely in the freezer getting ready and you notice the sound is better. I remember my microphone now, don't judge. We're gonna turn our oven to 375 and get that going right there. Now we're gonna make the filling. And by the way, spoiler alert, that crust, it will keep in the freezer for a long time. So if you think that you want to plan ahead, you should know that's probably the most time consuming part. So get one in the freezer, have it baked right ahead. So now we're gonna get our big heavy cast iron, not cast iron, well I could get the cast iron out, but it's not big enough for what I wanna do right here. Getting my big frying pan out. I need four tablespoons of butter. And we're gonna go ahead and melt that over medium high. And let's get that filling going because you want to make sure that filling has just a hot minute to thicken up so that it will be just right in that crust. And now I'm thinking ahead because I'm realizing that my deep dish pie pan that I normally use for pot pie is currently in the fridge with a pie in it. So I'm gonna punt here and I'll show y'all how to punt that anyway. So while your butter is melting, you have two options, friends. You can get out a onion and dice it and onion. You can get out some celery and chop it. You can get out a carrot and chop it. Or you can go to the Harris Teeter and buy a container of mirepoix. And if you didn't know, mirepoix is that magical combination of onions, carrots, and celery that smells like heaven in your kitchen and is what we're going to use as our base for our filling. Now, if you ever wondered, when you put this mirepoix in, you'll understand why it's so heavenly in everything. It's basically the smell of Thanksgiving, right? Because this is the base for your dressing. 
So you're going to cook this in the pan until the onions are translucent. That is your dead giveaway that your base is ready. Now if you are the industrious sort who chops your own vegetables, you're probably going to be horrified to find out that I did not cook my own chicken for the pot pie. I did not, friends. I have fallen for the best convenience ever in modern times which is the roasted chicken at the grocery store, which I, somebody's got to explain that math to me. Why is it cheaper for me to buy a cooked roasted chicken than to buy a raw one? Which then is gonna cost me the time and the aggravation of fixing it up. I don't understand. You probably can't explain it to me. I'll probably have to go back to college and figure it out. But what I did was I bought a roasted chicken on the way home for $4.99 and I pulled it off and so for the record, I tend to keep a couple of chickens in the fridge anyway because my kids' favorite quick weeknight supper is my chicken and rice skillet, which if you've missed that recipe, it's, I don't know, several episodes back, but it's probably my most popular reel on Instagram, which I am fascinated by what people will watch on the Instagram. All right, so, oh my goodness, if y'all had smell of vision you'd be wishing you were up in my house because you'd be like, Lee Brown, we're coming over. All right, so once this is ready, we're then gonna add the chicken in. Then we're gonna add some flour to make it nice and thick. And that's where we're gonna bring in what? You know what's next. <gasps> White Lily, that's right. White Lily, the best flour ever created. And we're gonna use all purpose because again, self-rising in a gravy, I guess it would work, but that's weird. So just, you know, you do you, but me, I, <laughs> I got limits, friends. I mean, I still am. Just a you know regular old southern middle-aged mom wearing pearls in the kitchen, but I got an apron on because I have at least learned that much during the time frame of making this cooking show for you people, my friends and loved ones. Okay. Oh my gosh, I can't tell what smells better, y'all. The butter or the onions is such a close call. All right, so that's about ready. You're gonna need a quarter cup of the flour to go in with your chicken. I'll put the flour in first. And don't ask me why. I think it's because I like how it mixes in with the moisture of the butter. Just a quarter cup sprinkled in there. It's going to make it nice and thick, which is important for your pot pie. We're actually going to need the flour here in a minute as we get ready to roll out our dough. Yay! It's so much fun. From a seasoning standpoint, you can use pretty much any seasoning that you enjoy for poultry. I go for the one, the only McCormick's <laughs> poultry seasoning. I mean, which is frankly just a bunch of sage and turmeric and thyme, but I like to just use the poultry seasoning. And so I'm just gonna put in probably two tablespoons worth. It might be three, because I really enjoy the flavor of it. You know what else is really good in this is adobo. So if you're somebody who likes flavors from the deep, deep, deep south, toss in some adobo sometime, because you will freaking love it. And then we're also going to add in some, we'll add our chicken in. And that is the meat of one roasted chicken. Let's get that broken up in there. Cause it was cold and now it is warming. I'm also gonna need to add some heavy cream. And this one we'll use, oh I don't know how much heavy cream we're gonna use. Let's see, I don't know, about a quarter of a cup. I might even measure that because I don't want to mess up my thickening in here. So a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. All right. We're going to let that start to thicken up a little bit. Then we're going to add three cups of those of y'all that watch my channel are thinking this looks suspiciously similar to that chicken and rice. <laughs> I know, right? Don't be judgy. We need three cups of chicken broth. Tonight we're using Harris Teeter, low sodium. You know the rules. It's because Lee has it in the house. All right. And again, the reason I'm measuring this is because I don't want to mess with my thickening. If you're wondering why I'm not splashing this all over the kitchen, make sure you've subscribed to the channel because in addition, to showing y'all what my family and I eat for supper. I love giving y'all my little tips and tricks that I have learned from my grandmothers and my aunts over the years in the kitchen. So let's get three cups of chicken broth in here. Some of y'all might wanna add in some white wine for flavor. That is not my jam, but you do you. And let's get that stirred in nicely. 
All right. And if it doesn't feel thick enough, add more flour. If it adds, feels too thick, add a little more broth. And just figure out what you and your family like as a mix here. And while that is sorting itself out, let's don't forget the classics. We need a little bit of salt and pepper. And so I'm going to put in enough flat pepper to basically cover the surface. I don't want to overly pepper it because I put in a whole bunch of poultry seasoning, let's be honest. And then I am going to do kosher salt here, even though I did use table salt for the pastry. For the actual meal, I like kosher because I like the way it goes. Let's do about a tablespoon. I actually might need a wee tiny bit more because of that flour. Let's get that stirred in. By the way, speaking of tips and tricks, if you ever oversalt, friends, get you a quarter of a potato and dice it, put it in here, that potato will drink up the, uh, the salt. I don't know why, but it works. I don't have enough pepper in there, so let's pepper it one more layer around the top. All right, now, when this starts to bubble, we're gonna take it off the heat and let it sit and we'll get that crust ready to roll. All right, let's let that bubble and then I think our next step, we're going to have to look in the freezer and grab that crust. All right, that was not thick enough to satisfy me, so we've added a little more flour to it. Stir that in, let it keep thickening up. Now, if you were going to impress company, you'd want to have out your prettiest deep dish pie, but we are not trying to impress company around the brown house tonight, so any two quart bacon dish will do. My two and a half quart is going to work, and I'm going to have a little bit extra because I've made it a gracious plenty, so I've got both of them. I'm going to make a big one for supper and a small one for when mom's working late, so that way there's always food in the house when mom sometimes has to show property after dark. Not my favorite thing to do to be away, but is what it is. And in real estate, you learn how to roll with the punches. And all my realtor friends said, amen. But now all my realtor friends are thinking, Lee Brown, quit taking away all my excuses for not fixing supper. I know, <laughs> friends. All right, so I've already told y'all it's easier to work with cold dough, and that's why we put it in the freezer. Let me move my camera here. Dun, dun, dun. And since it's easier to work with cold dough, I've gotten two of my discs out. I don't think I'm going to need the third one, but if I do, I'll pull it out of the freezer in a second. Next thing I'm going to do is flour my surface because that's going to make it easier to work the dough. And also my dough's a little sticky. It's going to absorb some, by the way, when you're talking to your realtor, if you cook. This is a reason I don't use granite because granite is naturally porous. I have a quartz countertop. Yes, it costs me a little bit more, but I cook. So I'm going to put my rings in my pocket here, so that right here at my bay window, and spread this. Oh, if y'all are wondering, this is my bay window. Some kids call it my mom badge, but my grandmother always called that her bay window, and I guess that's how you could tell she was the wife of a builder. Okay, so let's got that floured surface. Let's take our dough out of our Ziploc bag so that we can roll it out. Don't be afraid to roll dough, friends. It's not scary. I don't know why we get so scared of things that our grandmothers did without even thinking about it, but here we are in America afraid of things. Although some of y'all might be foreign friends watching. Hey, glad to have you. All right, so let's get it laid out here, mush it down with the palm of our hand a little bit, create our dough. Now, when I'm ready to roll, I'm going to make sure that it's in one piece and it's not sticking to the countertop. By the way, I did wash my countertop three times before I floured it to put down my dough. And I'm going to get a little extra flour here ready at the edge. Now I do not use your standard rolling pin. I could. I have received them in the past, but some things you just do because they're what you're used to and it works. And so if you've watched any of my previous episodes, you know that what I use to roll is this bottle of white wine. <laughs> it's cold, and again, cold dough works better. 
So I use a cold wine bottle to roll out my dough. I don't know what this tastes like. Frankly, I don't care. I'm never going to drink it. I don't know who opened it at some point. Uh, we're just not going to ask that question. And we're just going to use that to roll it out. Now the beauty of chicken pot pie, y'all, is you don't have to have some fancy state fair winning crust. This thing's going to taste like heaven no matter what you do. You almost can't screw it up, let's just be honest. That's why this is the perfect pie crust. And I don't need to win awards. I just need my family to eat what I give them and not complain. And I'm going to tell y'all something. They will eat this and they will not complain. So we're just going to get it rolled out to a nice thickness here. How thick is up to you. So that's, you know, you do you. I'm going to get mine as thin as I can get it to lay on top of my container over here. And I get a little bit of dough that's stuck to the bottle. Here's the beauty. Just roll it right off. I know that is not your average way. I'm going to taste my dough. It might taste good. Mm -hmm. I did not put enough salt in there. I'm going to salt that a little bit more. Now, to get it up off the countertop, I'm going to get my spatula. I've still never figured this out. Still not 100% sure how to get this off the countertop without making a mess. I love raw dough. Don't judge. All right, next thing we're going to do Let's put our pot pie mixture in our dishes. A beautiful spoon rest back there. Courtesy of some good North Carolina. Oh, this might all fit in one container. Let's just take a gander at it. Okay. Come on, fit in there. Oh, it does all fit in that two and a half core. I don't need the second container. <gasps> Praise and glory be. All right, now that I've got it in my dish, Looking good. Let's put a lid on it. Ah, ha, ha. See, somebody usually tells you to put a lid on it tonight. That's a good thing. Okay, how are we going to position the camera here? Yeah. All right, now you can see this is not going to be perfect. Again, does not have to be. Some of y'all just need to learn how to do this kind of stuff so you can let go of perfection and just enjoy a little bit. So let's get this. I'm really just loosening up underneath. That's going to be a spare piece there. And here we go. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three, friends. Let's lay it up on top of the pie here. And there we go. All right, well, it fell in. That's all right, too. Break it off around the edges. We'll have a little bit of spare dough. And then actually, it's going to kind of fall in a little bit like chicken and dumplings and spoiler alert it tastes very similar I got to figure out something to do with the spare crust okay the next most important thing you got to do before you stick it in that oven is give it a little bit of room to breathe friends so get that little pair and knife that you use for random and sundry things and let's just poke some holes in it now you can make a design if you want to I'm just going to poke holes in it and this will let the steam out so it will cook evenly. I know it seems like a weird thing when you got holes around the edges, but just give it some room to breathe. And that's a little bit extra crust there. Well, that's already fallen in, so we'll let it fall in. All right, that's done. Now, the last thing you need to do so that you get that pretty golden brown on the top. The last step before she goes in the oven, get you an egg. And then we're going to make that nice little golden top that you adore so much. You need about two tablespoons of cold water. And we're going to whisk that up with your fork. This is called an egg wash. If you've ever wondered why things get that little golden look on the top, it's called an egg wash because the egg will cook on top of the pastry. Make a few bubbles on it. All right. Let me find my brush over here. I did not plan in advance, obs. Okay. So now we're going to take the egg wash. I'm just going to decorate the top of the crust. You don't have to go overboard. Just a light layer. And some of your filling may have already come through some of your holes. That is fine. Does not hurt a thing. It's just going to be bubbly, smelling good, that's all. 
and I'm going to get all the way up here around the edges because I like the golden brown. All right, it adds protein too, so I think this makes it a even more complete meal. All right, next we got to go in the oven. Very important step here because pot pie does have a tendency to bubble, bubble, toil, and trouble. And extra credit if you know which Shakespearean play that is from. It is not just from your second grade elementary teacher. So put this on a cookie sheet or a rimmed sheet of some sort because when you cook this, it's going to boil up and could make a giant mess. We're going to put this in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes and then just wait and see how excited you're going to be. You know, there's just those days when the timer goes off and all you can smell is amazingness and your family comes upstairs and says, oh, oh, is it ready yet? And here's why. First of all, your oven is clean as a whistle from having this on a baking tray. Check that out, friends. That is the pot pie to die for. Enjoy it. By the way, a little piece of crusty bread with it to sop up that extra liquid. Mmm, that's some good eating. Subscribe for more. Give me a like, give me a share, and I'll see you next time.